Welcome to my Joshua Tree video where I will share my experience and offer you some tips if you wish to camp at this magnificent national park. This video tells the story of my camping trip to Joshua Tree that almost ended in disaster. Riding shotgun is my friend Roger, an experienced adventurer himself who has climbed Mount Whitney, Mount Kilimanjaro, been a scuba diver, a skydiver, a triathlete and more. This is my second time visiting Joshua Tree. I have two goals for this trip. One is showing Roger what overlanding is all about, and the second is taking the Jeep and X-Venture trailer through Burdu Canyon. It's a tough off-road track. Roger will be able to drive, and I can film the journey. If the trip does go sideways through Burdu, I know Roger is someone I can count on. Along the western portion of Highway 62, known as the most desolate highway in California, lie the towns of Joshua Tree and 29 Palms. Take Utah Trail from 29 Palms or Park Boulevard from Joshua Tree into the Joshua Tree National Park and prepare to be amazed. Rock formations, breathtaking views, amazing sunrises and sunsets, dark skies full of stars, and of course, the ancient Joshua trees themselves that can be up to a thousand years old. These elements and more combine to create an immersive natural experience that is sure to be inspiring. The history of Joshua Tree includes men exploiting its natural resources. The remnants of these endeavors are well preserved and can be viewed along easy hiking trails. Miners here in Joshua Tree were after gold, and we will see the original equipment used to process that ore and extract the gold. Our first task is to find a campsite. So that's why we're driving around Hidden Valley Campground looking in this first come first serve campground for a site for our trailer and our jeep. These first come first serve campsites can be tricky. You look for an empty camp, place something like a chair or other gear there, then you drive about 10 miles back to the entrance and hope nobody has paid for it already. Sounds easy right? Unfortunately there are scammers who know how to manipulate this system and monopolize campsites, often without paying. On my previous trip to Joshua Tree, we ran into trouble with one of these campsite scammers. And I'm going to write an extensive article on how to deal with this problem. There will be a link in the description and one overhead in this video. Check it out, it will be an awesome blog post. We found an awesome campsite, probably the last one at Hidden Valley. If you find a campsite, it's going to be beautiful. We set up the X-Venture XV3 off-road trailer and found the perfect spot to set up my trusty spring bar tent for Roger to stay in, nestled in between some rocks and bushes, with lots of privacy. We set up the rest of the camp and prepared some dinner. Looking around the camp, you could see how magnificent the rock formations are. After dinner, Roger got a campfire going in my Snow Peak fire pit. While we were enjoying the fire, we started making plans for the next day, and I used my Garmin GPS Map 66i to text my wife, let her know my location, and let her know that I was safe. I woke up to an amazing sunrise. This is winter at Joshua Tree, and this camp is at 4,000 feet elevation. It gets very cold. In fact, my first trip here was in a snowstorm. And during the night, a coyote came by and was howling his head off. It was a little unnerving. Time for coffee and some breakfast. I usually make a big breakfast once on every trip. This morning was that day with hash browns, scrambled eggs with peppers, mushrooms, and onions that I prepped, and some cheddar cheese. Most days, breakfast is coffee, instant oatmeal, or a hot Korean noodle soup. I like my iron pans when I'm camping. One of them is almost 100 years old and still going strong. We dedicated this day to touring the park and seeing some of its many attractions. With breakfast done, we headed out to the Barker Dam parking lot. From here, we could hike out and see Barker Dam, but Roger decided he wanted to see the Wall Street Mill. The mill was used to process ore and extract the gold from it. Joshua Tree was once the site of many mining claims. The Wall Street Mill operated all the way up until 1966. Along the trail is this cool old car. 
If you know what kind of a car this is, tell me in the comments. Also, if you're enjoying the video and finding value in it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps to grow the channel, and I really appreciate it. About a mile past this car is the Wall Street Mill. You can see where the ore cars were pulled up and dumped into the crusher to crush the ore and start separating it from the gold. Pretty amazing how the climate in the southwest preserves all this old equipment and buildings. And out here by the Wall Street Mill are a couple of more old cars that are abandoned here in the desert. If you know the make and model, leave a comment. It would be really interesting to know. We're going to head on back to the Jeep and check out another part of the park. We headed over to the Geology Tour Road. You don't really need a massive four-wheel drive vehicle to drive this road, but a little bit of extra ground clearance is advisable and all-wheel drive would be cool in case there's sandy conditions or wet. But it's one of the most excellent drives to do in the park and it takes you down to Pleasant Valley, the Geology Tour Road Loop, and off the Geology Tour Road Loop you can get to the Burdu Canyon Trail which will take you south and out of the park. There's these old tanks here at Pleasant Valley. I'm not sure exactly. They might have been water for water and cattle. Possibly, if you know, leave me a comment. But it is an interesting place. And it's also the way you can access the Fried Liver Gulch Trail, which is an, an out and back hiking trail that a lot of hikers like to do in Joshua Tree. If you are planning on doing the Burdu Canyon Trail, make sure you have a high clearance vehicle, all the recovery equipment you need to get your vehicle out if it gets stuck, plenty of water, first aid kit, and all the things you need whenever you're doing anything in a remote area. We headed back up the Geology Tour Road and checked out all the rock formations you see along the way going backwards this time. Um, pretty interesting. A lot of the rock formations and a lot of Joshua trees. We got back on the pavement and enjoyed the ride over to Keys View Lookout. From here, Keys View Lookout, you can look down on the Coachella Valley. You can see on some days all the way to Mexico. It's just a magnificent view of Southern California. And it's such a vast view, it's kind of mind boggling. It's definitely worth going to check out, and the wind will be blowing more than likely. A very interesting place. Um, you can see how rugged the terrain is here. Just imagine being here a long while ago without all the conveniences and comforts that we have now. This has been a great day of sightseeing around Joshua Tree National Park. Just a magnificent place. We're going to head back to our camp now and make a plan for just exactly what we're going to do the next day. Back at camp we broke out the Joshua Tree map and checked out our route for the next day. Back down the Geology Tour Road and this time instead of looping around and coming back we would follow the road to Burdu Canyon. I have met a lot of overlanders who have been through Burdu Canyon but none have ever towed a trailer through it. I was eager to give it a try, towing my X-Venture XV3 off-road trailer. With Roger along, I knew we could figure out a way to get around all the obstacles. The plan was to get to Dillon Road all the way south of the park and drive northwest, beginning our trip back home when we were done. I have a tremendous amount of confidence in my X-Venture XV3 trailer. I have taken it over some awesome off-road tracks already and had no problems. It just goes wherever the Jeep goes and if you want to see a great review of that trailer I'll leave the card above and you can check that out. I reviewed the trailer and you can you can see just how it's put together and it makes it such a quality product. It's a military spec trailer. Their civilian side makes the X-Venture and their military side makes the military trailers 
and they are they are just a fantastic product. Check out my video, and if you're interested in a trailer, check them out too. It's a great company, and great folks work there. And I don't receive any compensation from X Venture Trailer or Shut Industries, the parent company of X Venture Trailer. It's just my opinion because of my experience with my X Venture Trailer over the last three years. Another beautiful Joshua Tree sunrise. Now it's time to get some coffee, some oatmeal, and pack everything up and get ready to head on out to Burdu Canyon. The coffee and oatmeal is quick and easy. We're going to break down the spring bar tent that Roger's been staying in, pack up all the gear, hook up the Jeep to the trailer, and we'll be on our way. My Magdalena tent cranks down. It's an auto home. I have a video review of it on my channel. Uh, I'm not sponsored by this company or any other company, and it's just my opinion in the review, but if you're interested in that rooftop tent, then check it out. Um, the fire pit here is a Snow Peak fire pit. There'll definitely be a link for that down in the description of the video if you're interested in that. It, it's just been awesome. I also did a video and a review on it. I'll tie up these front runner boxes and we'll be getting close to getting out of here. Looks like Roger's about ready to go. I'll get him to back the Jeep up to the trailer and I'll hook everything up and we'll be on our way. But wait a minute. I've got a major problem. When Roger started the Jeep up to back it up to the trailer, I saw that there was oil coming out, just spewing out of the engine. And it turns out I had a loose oil filter. We drove around all day the day before without any problem, no oil leaks, and in the morning, the oil started coming out like crazy. Uh, thank God it wasn't a terrible problem with the motor. Uh, just a loose oil filter. And don't ask me how it got loose. I've never heard of that happening before. What I had to do, since I'm in the middle of Joshua Tree, no phone communication, I had to bum a ride down to the town of Joshua Tree, take a bus to the Jeep dealer. From the Jeep dealer, I rented a car, which... They delivered to the Jeep dealer, and I took that car, stopped at the hardware store, got a socket to fit the top of this oil filter, and then drove all the way back up to Joshua Tree, installed the, installed the oil filter, and then everything was fine. But unfortunately, that took so many hours to do all that, that, that we are not going to get to do Burdu Canyon. Bummer that we didn't get to do Burdu Canyon, but it was still a great trip to Joshua Tree National Park. And if we had been on Burdu Canyon and the Jeep started leaking oil down there, and it was such a remote area, we would have had to pack out or I don't know exactly what we would have done with only one vehicle. But anyways, Roger and me returned the rental car and started our trip back home. We didn't make it all the way, but we stopped in Jawbone Canyon, which is a pretty cool place, especially if you're an off-roader and you have a motorcycle or a quad. It's also just a cool place to stop halfway between my house and a lot of the locations in Southern California. Anyways, if you got some value out of this video, you enjoyed it, it may help you on your next trip to Joshua Tree, hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and share the video. If you know anybody else that's interested in Joshua Tree, sharing really helps a lot. The subscribing helps out the algorithm quite a bit and really helps me grow the channel. And I just want to say thanks a lot for watching. I will see you on the next one. And don't forget, on Muddy Ruts, the best is yet to come.